Today I'm going to show you how to produce in the style of everybody's favorite sad boy, Lauv. If I were to boil down his style, I would call it sappy love songs that kind of like slap and go a little harder than you would expect them to with like electronic beats. So I'm going to break down this style in a track that I produced. But before we get into that, hi, my name is Seth. I produce under the name Velvet Ear. I work as a song completion producer, meaning I take artists' song ideas and produce them into fully finished tracks ready for Spotify releases. Songs I've produced and written have been on these playlists. So if you have a modern pop vision that you want to get started, check out the top link in my description and we can get started on your project. All right, so here's the track that I've got. Here's what the whole thing sounds like together. So real fun, real poppy and bouncy. I'm just gonna go through all the elements real quick. Something to note about this style is there actually aren't that many instrument groups. I've color coded them here, but you can see there's literally one two, three, four, five. And they all have their own layer of complexity, but they're all pretty simple and straightforward. So the first ones we're gonna look at are these pads. And these pads come in two main sections. The first one are these output arcade loops that I've been using. The first one here is this arcade loop. Really ambient and floaty. I'm gonna show you what it's like without all the effects on it. So the first thing I did was I added EQ to filter out a lot of it. Just wanted that sort of ambient mid-range. And then I used the Polyverse Infected Mushroom Wider. Just give it a little bit more width. And then I used the Tal Chorus. Just to make it a little more weird detuning and more stereo again. And then I added some Ron Reverb from Native Instruments. This is my favorite ambient reverb. And then finally, to make it flow with the beat, I added some One Knob Pumper to sidechain it. To me, it was just the perfect pad to give the beat some movement. And so what I did was I duplicated that sound, but then I went into arcade and I went to that sound and I transposed it up an octave above what it already was. And it made it sound like this. Adjusted the filter a little bit more just because there was some low end information that we didn't need. And the rest of the chain is essentially the same. And then I just blended it underneath the main one. And I just feel like those two pads mixed together make it really thick and wide without really being super distracting. And then I decided to double them up with some electric guitars. So here's what the electric guitars sound like all by themselves. So again, this is pretty simple. I'll just dissect one of them because they're essentially all the same. So it starts out like this, which is Native Instruments guitar rig on the Andy in a bottle setting. This is seriously one of my favorite pop guitar tones. And I'm just playing straight 16th notes on one note. So I filtered it with some EQ, added some ROM reverb again, and then threw on some one knob pumper. And then I double tracked it panning them left and right. And then I did the exact same performances in octave up. And then it looks like I did some filtering on the group as well and notched some stuff out. So all together, they sound something like this. So all the pads mixed together sound something like this. It's just such an energetic pad and it adds so much life to the track with that sort of bouncing side chain effect. And I feel like a majority of that comes from the fact that I'm throwing reverbs on them and then side chaining them after the reverb, which is the reason why I'm not using a send. So that's all the pads. So let's look at these synths next. So these two synths are actually playing pretty much the same thing. They're just on two different patches. This first one here is the Anna 2 synth on the church preset. And it looks like I have some basic EQ with some OTT and some wider. And then the patch right below it is the same synth, but on this modified grand music box preset. I think I just turned off some of the effects. And it's mixed really far below the other one just to give it some attack. So these two synths put together sound like this. I think in early versions, that sort of like that came up after the chord hits was a result of the OTT, but I kind of didn't mind it. And so I kept it in. Next thing we are looking at is this 808. So I will just turn off the effects real quick. So this is my favorite 808 preset from a plugin that I've ever used. It's Future Audio Works's Sublab plugin, and it's on their 808 NASCAR preset which is pretty fat and awesome. It's a very hard hitting 808 that still has a bit of mellowness. So I did some basic processing on it. Looks like I did some filtering on it to get rid of that high end. 
sidechained it to the kick, added a little bit of R bass to accentuate that next harmonic up from the fundamental. It's a little distorted, but I kind of like it that way. It's a very simple 808, but I feel like it gets the job done really well. Now what I feel like is the centerpiece of this beat is this vocal chop. So here's the thing, I crashed one of my plugins. So I've frozen these just so it doesn't freak out the computer right now, but I'll just talk through what I did. I literally held up my phone and recorded a voice memo of a melody idea that I had, which is all right, air dropped that to myself, brought it into my DAW, chopped it up for the performance that I liked, and then I threw some auto tune on it. And then I think I did some formant shifting to bring it a little bit lower. I then used a gate to clean it up. And then I ran it into a Guitar Rig 5 really distorted guitar preset, which is where a lot of that grit is coming from. It looks like I threw on a towel reverb. <laughs> Another thing that makes it a little bit thicker is I duplicated the main take that I did and then transposed that duplicate an octave up. So it adds a little bit more high end excitement on it. And transposing it up gave it some really weird artifacts that sounded really cool. So I just blended it underneath that main one. And now for the star of the show, the drums. So I'll just go through these one at a time. Kick, I went on splice and got this Harris Cole kick. It had the electronic smack that I needed for a pop beat like this, but it had that sort of like realistic sizzle on the top end. And then I got this hi-hat loop from Hard Trap and Future Wonk. Then I have this basic hi-hat loop from the That Sounds Elements pack. And for this one, I did some transient shaping to take off that sort of tail that they had. And then probably my favorite part of this beat is this decap shout sound effect, which here I'll just show you what it is dry. And then I'm running it through a little bit of erosion and then this driver preset for made of instruments. Just makes it a little bit grittier and makes it stand out in the mix a bit more. We then have my favorite crash sample ever, clap impact. It's this guy from the Future Bass pack from Singular Sounds. This is probably the first sample I ever got on Splice and I'm using it pretty much every single time. And then lastly, we have the snare group. So we're doing a lot of crazy processing on all these guys. So for example, this rim sound, we're doing a bit of auto pan so that it's kind of spreading from side to side. That with a little bit of transient shaping really makes it stand out. We then have this BB2 snare and there's a lot of processing on this. So here it is dry. This is the main snare, so we're doing a little bit more work with it. So we're doing the Kramer stereo tape from Waves. Just kind of saturates it and dulls it up a little bit. Doing some transient shaping as well. I just wanted to sustain a little bit longer. Doing some erosion frequency shifting, just to add a little bit of that sheen back. And then some super light OTT. We then have this malt snare, which is only hitting every other snare hit with a little bit of a reverb tail. Also using the tape distortion with a little bit of ROM reverb and some wider plugin. So it just hits every other snare hit. And then the last thing we have is this sort of clap sample. It's just a super white noisy clap sound, which I'm running through a lot of OTT. Just adds a little bit of girth behind every few hits. And altogether, they sound something like this. It just adds a little bit more variety to the beat, and I believe that's everything. And altogether, it sounds something like this. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other pop artists that you'd want to see an emulation of, put them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.